welcome to the Pursuit of Healthiness podcast. I'm your host, Vinanda van Delft. I'm a health and mindset coach, spaghetti and ice cream lover, travel junk and a cat mom. I love conversations that are on a more raw and deeper level. And today I have with me Monica Sharma. She had an arranged marriage but is now a single mom and widow. As an introduction, she would like me to share a message she wrote down for you. Being a widow does not mean that your life has ended. You did not choose this and it is written in your destiny. So no complaints and just accept it with courage and believe in God. It means that you have given another chance to live life on your terms. You are the chosen one and it is in your hands on how to take it. You have the chance to improve yourself on all levels and become a better person. My message for all women is to believe in themselves and I hope to inspire as much women as I can. You are strong, wise, resilient and you can do anything in life. Let's listen to her story. Hello, Monica, and welcome to my podcast. How are you doing today? I'm okay. Thank you very much for giving me a chance today to speak on your podcast. I'm excited. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yes, to, you know, help women and bring awareness. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself, hmm. what, what you've gone through, where you come from, what you do now. So I came from India uh, 15 years ago as a student, got married through arranged marriage, through my uh, relatives and stuff. And, um, you know, it was arranged marriage. And, you know, once you get married, you know, you're excited for your life and all that. And uh, but uh, in my marriage, yes, I had some, uh, you know, issues with it. Uh, Didn't have good relation with my in-laws. We couldn't build one. You know, I wouldn't say it's their responsibility alone. I tried my best, but um, it didn't go so well. So alongside uh, with my husband, yes, before it was challenging because in the arranged marriage, you don't know uh, the environment I come from. Yes, in India, we do arranged marriages mostly. So I had my own expectations about it. And uh, being the daughter-in-law, you expect, you know, you're loved because you left the house and all that. So, I mean, it was there. And uh, to some extent, then something triggered with them. And uh, so we couldn't build in our relationship in those years I have lived with them. Then came along my kids. So I have two children, wonderful boys I am raising. So I'm very proud and very uh, happy about it. I feel blessed that uh, God has given me chance to raise two boys. And, um, you know, and um, yeah, things were getting better in the sense. So um, I didn't have a voice in the house you know, like, I didn't have a voice. So my opinion didn't matter. Mm -hmm. So um, it was challenging. And um, then I did is, you know, this is my life where I'm gonna go, I had no place to go to, you know, just let go the relationship, my husband as a person, he was wonderful person, Uh, no bad habits, or, you know, nothing that so I'm like, you know what, it's okay, everybody suffered through the relationship. And um, I'm still in a better place. You know, I still have a house. And um, so it was just going, I accepted myself to be in that. I said, you know what, this is your life. You cannot go out. You have your children. If I go, you're going to lose them. You don't have a house. You're not established. What you're going to do, you will be on the road and it's going to be a tough journey. So I accepted everything what I was going through and, um, you know, and just going through my journey. And I had... So in my relationship with my family, it was okay. There was no physical abuse, but I felt um, there was emotional and psychological abuse, you know, uh, Mm -hmm. making you feel that you're not enough, you know? And um, so I was just, I, and also I felt, I think now I give them permission for them to take me over, you know, I give them permission that, you know, I am, I am, please accept me. So I was sending energy through internally, through my thoughts and everything, right? To be accepted in the family, which didn't happen. Coming along and uh, recently, three years ago, four years ago, my husband came up with the cancer. It was unfortunate situation in our life because slowly afterwards, you know, things were better in our relationship. So I was very blessed. And I'm like, every day, I'm like, Lord God, this is a good sign that things are working out in our favor. I mean, everything is aligning where I need to see it, except my relationship with my in-laws and stuff. But that was not a big thing for me. I'm like, you know what, every house has a problem. 
it's okay it's okay you know <clears throat> you <clears throat> sorry you do your part and you will be fine right you can do this so i had inner voice in my inside me always telling me you know what you can do this this is your life you're gonna live this way either you'll be happy or complain about it and who are you gonna complain to there's no one available for you so and uh, then just continue with that uh, it was really shocking me and my husband we did everything we could in our hands um you know to take him out from cancer but it couldn't happen so it was God's choice you know and that he was at the point where even if he if he survived it would have been long difficult journey because he was very independent person like very independent person can do approach very positive so it was really shocking for him that being a healthy person never gone to doctor um you know he came up with that even I couldn't figure out, you know, what's going on with the life, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So my biggest fear was, um, you know, what's going to happen if he's gone. So I put everything in God's hand. I'm like, you know what? We did everything we can. You have given us opportunities, you know, to try different things. And um, it's up to you. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cry. I'm not, I, I'm going to accept whatever you bring for us, you know, and he was suffering. I couldn't see him suffering in the sense, although uh, everything, you know, whatever our relationship was, but he was still my husband. I loved him. I cared for him. He was my life, you know, that much I loved him. And uh, everything he says, I will do it. I will not question it because I always put myself behind, uh, thought that I'm not good enough, you know. Um, so, yeah, so... And the destiny was already for us, you know, to be a part of us. And that, that was a very difficult situation. But me and my husband, we did talk and, um, about what's the future for us, for me and my children. So we, we had the thing because I had a really hard time, you know, end, end days of my husband uh, with my relationship with my in-law. So I was just confused, scared, a uh, little fear where I'm going to go because we lived together whole life. Like I got married in the house and we lived there. No matter what happened, you stay in the house and, you know, just going through the life. So that was the only home I know. Uh, my kids born, raised there. So they had their, it was our nest. Then afterwards, my husband passed away. Their relationship very, very got deteriorate. I mean, lots of, you know, we had arguments in between, um, which was not, which I did not expect, you know, being a daughter-in-law, you know, I expected more support from them because I was ready to give up. I was ready to, I made my mind. I say, you know what, their, their son is gone. I'm their son. I'm their daughter. So I had this in my mind and I could, in those 15 years I lived there, those were my parents, you know, yeah. those were my parents. I consider them as a parents and uh, lived there. And um, so I had, I, I was sad. I was very, very emotionally, uh, you know, broken. Um, that why, what is the reason I'm not accepted? What is the, what is a good thing I can do to be accepted in the house? But it, it wasn't meant for us. It wasn't meant for us, no matter what I did. Um, they thought other women, other daughter-in-law, they're doing a lot for their homes and stuff, but, but they couldn't see what I'm doing for the family. They couldn't see how much sacrifices I have made, you know, to be, keep my family together and take care of them. Yeah. So <clears throat> then we had little, very hard conversations where uh, they accused me, my family, you know, for my husband's death. I'm like, you know what, this is not, this is not right. I mean, I need your support. You need my support. I know when someone close by, like closed person pass away, everybody react differently. Yeah. You know, everybody react differently. Some get aggressive, some get quiet. My, my nature is I will get quiet. I will not talk to anyone. I will just take those emotions inside me, battle myself, which is wrong thing, which is very, very, very wrong thing. Because in my situation, I had no one to talk to, um, you know, discuss how I feel. Even my husband wouldn't listen to me. Uh, he, will, he had made that, you know, I'm not going to listen to you if you talk anything about the family. So I'm like, okay. You have no choice. You have to deal with yourself. Yeah. You bring the bring situation outside, you're defaming the family, which you're not, which you cannot do, you know? 
And um, so you putting uh, either you suffer or everybody suffer. So I say, you know what, I'm going to suffer. It's okay. My, I'm still taking care of my family and stuff. And um, so that was it. And during that time, it, my body just reacted. I got health issues, you know, started to build up. I'm still going through that stress and everything. But um, so in the nutshell, like I was not able to convince them except me up to now, which I'm okay. But uh, then I just decided one night, I'm like, you know what? I can't live it. I have to be out. I had a fear. Yes. A biggest fear. Is this a right decision for me? What I'm going to do? I have no place to live. Where I'm going to go? Whose house I'm going to live? So I had my parents with me. they they favored me. They said, you know what, whatever you decide, we are with you. And so I had my children, my parents, no place to live. And uh, the day before I left a night, I couldn't sleep. In my mind, I'm like, I'm looking for guidance from God and, you know, divine sources, you know, let me know, please tell me this is the right decision uh, I'm making. I don't know what future is counted for me because being women on the road, it's it's different with the children and your parents, right? They came from India. So, so I made it. We went to, we live with our, you know, relatives from one place to another because then once you are in the situation, you become a burden, which I never wanted to be burden or any complication for any of our, um, you know, mm-hmm. family, extended family, but they were great. Um, you know, they gave us room to settle and stay there for a while. So, which was the biggest support. But then I realized, I'm like, you know what? I came out, God gave me place to live. There is a way I can make it. You know, I am on the right path. So that was a game changer in the sense uh, for me that um, I started to believe in myself and incline more towards God, my prayers. And I just hold on to the God. That's all I can say, you know. I started to do that. And uh, my inner voice, yes. My inner voice always told me, don't give up. So that always have been my key. Uh, mm-hmm. When something happened, you know, it, like, it's hard for, for me to convince myself um, to say that, you know, and accept something. If my inner voice says, you're not ready, you're not going to do it. So I think I have that built in, in me uh, in the sense that, um, yes, I'm not going to give up. If I think I need to give up, I will. But I have control on that. So, yeah. So, and that, that how I cried first year, very hard. Just boggling my mind, you know, what happened. I didn't, ex- I didn't want that. I didn't want to go out of the house. You know, I want to live there. I wanted to support my in-laws. Um, I wanted to raise my children. I wanted to have a good relation with me, my kids. So that was the plan. But, you know, divine has some other plan for you, right? So, yeah. and, um, and slowly, yeah, first year was grief and, uh, you know, going through that pain and emotional stress and all that, right? Along with even they, we had, the, even from their side, they didn't know that I'm going to leave the house. So it was, you know, and all that time I thought I was waiting, that, you know, they will come, they will realize uh, the first week I left. They will realize what they have done. They will come back and say, sorry that, you know, uh, daughter, I, we made a mistake. It was just our emotions, uh, you know, which we shouldn't have said the things we said to you. But that never happened. Mm-hmm. That never happened, you know. Uh, I waited for them. I waited, 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 you know. Now they realize what they have done. What is the reason I'm out of the house? They didn't realize, but that's okay. I'm like, you know what? It has to be, it has to be. So I started to live my life. I got a house, which was, I was very fortunate, you know, to have a roof on my children. So I don't have to be burdened or uh, complicate anybody else's life. You know, <clears throat> everybody have responsibility, right? I mean, one is you see your cousins, you see your friends, every time and it, they were in a pain too that uh you know because i i'm loved with loved by everybody right so i mean i had good relation with everybody but it, they were hurt my side of family were hurt what happened and uh at the same time you realize you don't want to be burdened on them you know i don't yeah. want to be like that right so i want to have where i can start my own life and just uh you know do what i need to do yeah. So, yeah, I continued my, I work, I work full time. So that time uh, I was able to get, you know, less hours from my work. So just to settle and sort out 
what I need to do. Uh, lots of turbulence, yes, once you lose someone, you know, especially a partner. And uh, no matter what, you know he's going to be going. No matter what, they're coming with sickness. No matter that it is sudden death, it's a shocking for you. You mm. left by yourself. You know, it's because you think that this life you're going to live together. We had planned together. We're going to get old together. I will, buy, you know, sometimes we will laugh and we go out say, I'll tell, you know, when I see older couple, I, I'm like, you know, this is our future, right? So, mm. I mean, we used to have talks, you know, this is, this is what we look forward. And we worked hard. We worked hard together to build our future together once children get old and just seeing, you know, the happy picture, right? But yeah. after that, yes, one year was difficult for me and just settling and still my mind, my heart is going into the house. I'm like, no, I have to go back to them. You know, one side of my brain uh, was telling me no matter what emotional abuse, but you still put your kids, uh, they are not seeing them. So I had that feeling, you know, how they're feeling. My kids are not good. Uh, you know, they will feel their grandparents and they need to see them too for their own, their own sake, because my grandkids are the only one they have, yeah. you know, we are the only family, but still all my, all my, you know, internal thoughts and, you know, just thinking about it, having good, good uh, intentions, it didn't happen. Right. So, and yeah. that was it. So now I'm on my journey and the first year, yes, it was grief. Second time it was just standing out. And, and now I realize, you know, I need to bring this story out um, to everyone, you know, that yeah. we can do this. You know, if you believe in yourself, uh, just have a good heart. Just have a good heart, good intention, work on yourself. You know, don't, don't just think that um, you need to pay, you need to, you know, you need anybody else acceptance. Don't look for that. You know, create yourself, make yourself a better person, invest in yourself, you know, through health, good thoughts, connect, connect to divine, you know, whoever you believe in, have a good, clear, honest connection. Yeah. Don't reach out, you know, just because you need it. Make them, you know, that's the, that's the best source, you know. And um, yeah, so right now I am uh, doing, you know, where I need to be. And if I were in that position, if I were there in the house, I would never get this chance, you know, to come and yeah. speak up and help other women, which I am very blessed and honored, uh, you know, that uh, I am able to recognize that because there's so many people, so many women, they don't get this chance. Yeah. You know, they're not fortunate. They're still struggling with their own mind, own thoughts. And uh, we just don't think that we are good enough. You know, as a woman, we don't think that and we need to think that. And uh, so, yes, I, I have, I am investing in myself every day, uh, you know, through education, working hard and, uh, you know, taking care of my health. So I made a promise. Yes, I'm going to look after you and uh, keeping good thoughts in my mind for everyone. Good energy for everybody. Uh, you know, I have no hard feelings for anyone. Even at this point, I have no hard feelings for my in-laws. Uh, in that situation, they were struggling with their thoughts. Everybody have opinion about, uh, you know, their own thoughts. Yeah, they think true. we cannot, we cannot force anybody. We cannot compel anybody. So that was my thing that, you know, I seek uh, permission from them to be accepted. You cannot do that. Never, never in a life do that. You know, that's my, one of my thing. And um, you don't need to get permission. You yeah. need to be yourself. You know, you just need to be yourself as long as you're doing good. Cause I knew I was able to live in the house because I knew I, I'm not doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm not doing anything wrong. I am being respectful. I'm doing everything what I can in my power, but yes, there are certain things which hurt me. Uh, but it didn't matter, you know, it didn't matter because we are in control in ourselves. We want them like as a woman, um, you know, it's our responsibility, how we treat ourselves. Don't worry. If you treat yourself good, you know, you protect your inner self. Uh, you're looking after yourself. Everything will fall in place when it's the right time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah I, so. I, I do have a question though, because 
uh, th that is something, especially in the Western world, like arranged marriage, uh, arranged marriages. Um, did you did you knew when you were younger? Were you raised to be um, a woman? From uh, you know, you had to be the perfect woman for the guy you were going to marry someday. How does it? How does that work? And and how did you? How is the relationship with the with your man when when you get married? Because you don't. I, I, did you know each other beforehand or was it no. really you saw each other for the first time and you got married? Yes, and... that's right. So we didn't know. Um, as I, I came from India, he's born and raised here. Uh, so, you know, in Canada. So um, they're a very different point of view, but he still had that Indian tradition in him, you know, which I liked. And uh, being a woman, being as a girl, um, in India, most of now people are doing love marriages too in our community. It is very, very, very highly uh, done. Uh, less arranged marriages because everybody wants to look their partner. But in my mind, yes, because my mom, they, um, at their time, it was arranged marriage. For me, arranged was I was looking for someone who is, uh, uh, you know, accepted by the family too, you know. For my, in my mind and how I perceive my marriage was, if I bring someone in the house, nobody, only he will, they will know him, right? So marriage is connection between the families, not only between two people, yeah. right? So, I mean, if you have a family and uh, they know each other, it is better. It is better to have communication. You know each other and there's more harmony in the relationship, yeah. right? And uh, yes, and I, when I got married, we met a few times. So once we got engaged through our family, we met a few times and I really liked the qualities I was looking for, you know, a gentle, respectful, not having bad habits. Like he didn't, he was very ground to earth, very down to earth. Uh, you meet him one time, you will never forget him for, for your life. He had, you know, that's, that's aura in his, in his uh, life, you know, it, aura on his body. It, it just generates, it attracts you. So I'm like, you know what, this is the person I'm looking for who's caring. Um, so I just went ahead, yes. It took yeah. time. For me, I submit myself as a range manager because that I was wanted, right? And uh, if, if, you, if you didn't want it, that you had a choice to say, no, I don't want it? Or um, was it in, in your culture or in your community, is it still like, sorry but you have to deal with it to say it better. um yes no we i had a choice my parents were liberate but i knew that in my mind i didn't want to go love marriage so i made my mind that i'm gonna go arrange but yes in our community uh we have less choice uh you know where when some parents are strict and they want you to go through a range there have been horrible stories i've heard about women you know uh, where they try to go against their parents, but it didn't end up good, right? Yeah. So I, I had a choice, but I never met someone who I think was a right fit for me, mm -hmm. right? So I said, um, so yes, that was a, one of the things, yes, um, arranged marriage, yes. Um, that's where I went for. So during that course, I didn't meet anyone, um, you know, that uh, which clicked to me. So yeah. I'm like, you know what, it's okay. I'm going to go for arranged marriage. And uh, yes, in the first, it is difficult challenge because you don't know their habits and, uh, you know, um, you don't know what they like, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a work on, on relationship a lot. So yeah. I think you know, even more than you just, I mean, you really get into a marriage like that. And yes, I mean, a marriage, I believe is, is, is sacred i mean if you agree and if you take on that bond with each other i believe yes. you have to fight for it but usually uh, when it's not arranged you get time to get to know each other and then at some point you you see all the flaws yes <laughs> and yes, then you yes. can, and then you can still decide okay no you're not my soulmate or yes you are but you didn't have the chance to no to i really didn't have to... the chance no, no i didn't so, have the chance so how did you dealt with that mentally because you you said in the beginning it was um, difficult but how how did you cope with that uh you know as i said you know i cope myself internally uh we had issue when we started you know marriage with ourselves Again, it didn't, um, it was not straight. It was through pressure, lots yeah. of pressure to his parents. You know, they, they, 
for them in our society, it is um, Indian culture. It is uh, parents try to control you. They want to keep you with them, you know. So it is, it is very, very normal, you know, where daughter-in-law come in your house and you have to build that relationship, right? I yeah. understand. But uh, often as in-laws, I think they forget that person left the house, their house, uh, to live in your house. It is something very normal. It, somebody, it's like you're allowing someone to enter in your home, uh, yeah. you know, come in your routines, come in your lives. But you have to be very open to the girl. You know, when it is not open, uh, I know people, like everybody's hesitant, but from my side, I was open book. You know, yeah. I didn't, but uh, the acceptance was the biggest, biggest, biggest challenge for me, you know, all the time, tried to fit in, uh, you know, and left my family and everything just because, uh, you know, to be part of their family fully, yeah. Uh, I, we never had conversation, you know, openly what's going on. We did before when I got married newly and uh, they didn't like certain ways of me and they wanted me to do certain things, but it used to hurt me. Yes. It used yeah. to like, you know what? I never seen in my family. Uh, I have, uh, we have, I have my cousins, right? So they got married when women come in our family. We didn't, I didn't see growing up those situations. We were very open right away when the girl come in the house, open conversations, there's no, there are expectations, but you still understand that, you know, she's still someone else's family. She has to adjust, yeah. you know, give some time, but yes, it, it was challenging. And then there was a point where um, there was a early stages of our marriage where there was a choice I had whether I could leave him, you know, or I left, stayed, um, you know, stay there. So yeah. I made my decision to live there because I say, you know what, what if, if I go from this house, what I'm looking, my parents not here, I have no support. I'm still new in the country where I'm going to go. Yeah. Right. Where I'm going to go. I'm like, you know what, then I, then I just pray to God. I'm like, you know what, you have decided this for me. I will go through this. You know, yeah. I'm not going to leave the house. I'm going to live in this because once I do that, it's going to be, Another challenge is in my life. And uh, I have no, my, if my parents were there that time, yes, maybe I would have made the same choice I made today. Yeah. But then I decided, I said, you know what? You need to work on a relationship and you will do it. So I yeah. commit to myself. I'm going to do what's in my hand, uh, you know, to make things right from my side. And uh, we will see. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that was it. You know, I gave up. I gave submission. 100% in my relationship, what in my power to do. But um, my thing was to look after, I always uh, be wanted to be around my husband and, you know, a few times, yes, because for him too, it was like invasion, right? Like somebody yeah. come in your life from nowhere. And uh, because he was living certain ways, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm like, you know, he's doing his own thing. I will go sit down there. I'm like, what you doing is, I can understand, you know, he must have felt, what do I do? You know, yeah. like you're, we don't know much each other. So it took time. It took yeah. very long time to uh, adjust. It yeah. does take, it's, it's a work, right? Either you do before wedding in love relationship, you have to work on yourself too, right? But uh, yeah. once you're in love before you have a relationship before marriage, it gives you opportunity that, you know, if it's not right for you, you have a choice to leave. Yeah. Yeah, right. I, have, I have two questions. So how, um, how big is the pressure in your culture uh, of leaving your partner? Because you said you had the opportunity to leave the marriage earlier in, in the early stages. Um, but how is that seen in, in, in your culture and in, in how, um, in what way has that stopped you from, from doing um, it? Society, society pressure. You know, yeah. you still think once they lay one in relationship uh, in that time, now they're more liberal, girls are doing it. But even now, once you're in a relationship, it's, it brings you lots of pressure for your parents, um, lots of pressure for society, like what they're going to think about you, uh, you know, how they're going to see you. You couldn't live in a relationship. I mean, lots of blames. Every blame is on the girl. Yeah. Wow, that's every blame. Yes, it is. I mean, 
So those were the things. And, um, you know, I'm like, you know, what I'm going to gain? Yes, I'm going to gain. I'm going to come out from the relationship. Then I give myself, I say, you know what? As a person, he's very nice. You know, what if, if I go into next relationship, the person is not nice. I mean, as a human being, he's a kind person. Yeah. Can I live with him? Yes. Do I need to work on relationship? Yes. There will be some uh, difference all the time. Yes, there will be. You know, there was resistance, you know, uh, in our relationship to some extent. I could feel it, but it was building. So uh, over the years, we build that relationship where, yeah. uh, you know, there was understanding. Uh, there was trust. And, uh, you know, and there was love too at some point. I would say that there was love. But coming through, leaving the family, no, I couldn't do that. Mm. I couldn't. It was just something built in women, uh, you know, well, no matter what. In my case, yeah, my husband was a very good person. In some cases, women in our society, they are not fortunate. You know, they, up to now, I hear the stories, they cannot leave. They just, they won't leave. They won't, not, not can't, I would say they won't leave because yeah. they have other pressure. Their family pressure, their society pressure, uh, what they're going to think of themselves and uh, how society will take them, how you will be accepted, you will be uh, labeled. Yeah. You know, do you, do you regret those decisions that you've stayed uh, in, in your relationship? Do you regret it? Or do you regret the arranged marriage in, in general? Or you don't regret anything at all? I do regret, you know, I think uh, if I knew my husband before better, we would have better understanding. I would have known his family more. So when I enter in the house, I would have prepared myself and, you know, in a different way, yeah. uh, what was expected out of me. You know, I could have been better prepared. Yes, I do regret. I mean, um, arranged marriage is no good. I mean, you know, you need to know the person more. You, more most of, out of that, more than a person, family. You need to understand what you're getting into, what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, you know, can yeah. you live with them, do your values, con uh, connect with their values, right? I mean, what are the expectations? What is expectation of daughter-in-law in their terms? So there are lots of pros and cons. Yeah. Uh, arranged marriage, it is difficult, yes, because you don't know the person much. All you know through people. Right. All you know, when we go into the society, everybody wants to be the best of them. Yeah. Do you agree on that? Right. Yeah. We meet people. We want to be best. We want to show when we meet our friends. Oh, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Yeah. And look at me. I'm doing fine. I'm That's doing right. this and that. Yes. And my life is perfect. <laughs> yes. And that, yeah. because half of the part is we are stressing our lives already. Yeah. Everybody go through challenge. Not even single person on the earth. I've seen who doesn't have a challenge. So mm -hmm. when we meet in a society, we don't want to bring troubles. We want to show people that we are doing good. All is okay because we don't want their interference in our life. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Right? We don't want their interference and we don't want to show them as a weak person. Yeah, or, or even be a burden because some people burden, ask yeah. how you are, but That's you don't right. want to be a burden like, actually, I'm not doing well, but I'm not going to, you know, burden you. That's with right. That yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, so I mean, yes, I regret it. I don't regret it to meet my husband. I told him, I say in the next life, I would like to know you better before we get married. You know, I always used to tell him, I say, I feel there's some resistance. Uh, the way I see our relationship, it took him very long time. Yeah. Very long time, you know, where I could see that energy fully involved. I mean, I don't uh, get me wrong that we didn't have good relationship. We, we did, but there was something missing. You well, know, it that wasn't connection. the typical love story. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So it was, it was just, we connected. I gave myself to be, I thought that was my love. You know, he was my love. That's it. You yeah. know, but in, in his eyes, everybody have different. I know, I guess men are different, right? They don't express themselves. They mm -hmm. express differently. Yeah. But uh, there was resistance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What, what is a lesson that you want to share with everybody that you've learned from your experience? Or what is it you want to say to people who have gone through the same situations or are in the same situation? I would say don't give up on yourself. 
don't give up on yourself don't give permission to other uh, to lead your life let take over you emotionally mentally um, you know you need to be agreement with yourself that you're gonna take this care of this body this soul which you have been given as a gift from God and just work on yourself you know don't blame others for not giving you what you want you need to create that yeah absolutely you know you need to create that and um, connect with people you know do what you feel to do but make sure you're doing it right you yeah. know don't don't do something if you're in my situation right now don't think you need to make your family low like i have no intention you know i'm not telling anyone or i've been in that situation i'm not telling that they did wrong i'm saying i did wrong to myself i allowed this yeah i allow this everybody to hurt me i allow this to you know have these things happen to me i allow this to suffer my body my mind my soul such a heaviness do not allow that you know take care of yourself once you do that connect whoever you believe in connect with that's you know divine source mm -hmm. and you're gonna get your answers so after this i you know i do lots of pray uh right now uh, i just cry i just if i have to cry you want to cry cry it show up blow i would say show up bold yeah show up confident it doesn't matter i cried yeah I used to cry in my, my, my relationship, I used to, but I didn't, I didn't show anyone. That was also, I would say, because I didn't have anyone to share with. But if you have someone, please share it. Yeah. You know, don't keep it yourself because that gets you. That gives you health problems. That gives you problems, challenges, because you deteriorate your body, your heart, your mind, your soul. There's so much heaviness on it. So... If you have someone who you can trust, it doesn't have to be your friend, your family, even an unknown person who is ready to listen to you, yeah. who can guide you, right? So yeah, those are, those are my things, you know. Beautiful. Um, yes. Great so advice. Yes, thank you. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if anybody wants some inspiration, motivation, it's all about that, you know, encouraging it, yeah. clearing those self-doubts, clearing what you're thinking, making your mind present it's very yeah. important it's very important healthy eating i recommend that you know what you when you when you eat good you think good yeah absolutely right <laughs> yeah like you, you need feel to feel good. good yeah i mean if the person doesn't you you can be pleased by everybody no if not everybody be going to be your friend they yeah. will not understand you they will not agree on what path you on. They will not value what your beliefs are, you know. And the other thing is we need to come out from this belief system. Yeah. You know, we, we all created that. You know, in our society, every society has some belief system which is coming from generation to generation. We need to break those. Yeah. But break those, but do not accuse anyone. Oh, I love that. Right? Yeah. So... We are responsible for our actions. I mean, yes, God given me choice. I had a choice to leave. I didn't leave, but I made my mind. I say, you taking this decision, you can, there are going to be challenges. Be ready for it. Yeah. You think you're making decision. You're taking some real decisions in your life. I mean, you have to be ready for it. Yeah, Don't think, also, yeah. Also take responsibility for your actions. You cannot That's blame right. it on everybody else. No, but for no, you, no. Like you said, you allow things to happen to you if you don't agree That's with right. them. And if they don't align with you, then you have to make a change yourself. You cannot wait for somebody else or the universe to change it for you. You, you have the power in you. You have the choice to make a difference, but you have to take responsibility for the choice. You absolutely. Make. absolutely. I totally 100%. And you know, after this, I have connected so much to different women. It's, it's just a different world for me now. Yeah. You know, the world which shows me that, yes, you can do this more. You can spread. You can help others now. You, I'm in that position where I just want to help women. You know, yeah. any question, anything you have, just bring it on to me, yeah. you know, um, and I can help. I mean, it's not, it doesn't matter if you lost someone. If you didn't lose someone, you still have questions. You still, we go through the life journey, right? Yeah. So it is something, you know, we just need an inspiration. We need an open ear. 
without any judgment. Yeah. So, right? so that's all we needed. If people want to contact you because they, they feel like you're an inspiration or they want someone to talk to, you know, who understands her, uh, how can they contact you or how can they get that motivation and that listening? Yeah, so I, I'm very active on Facebook. So, I mean, if you want to come on my page, all you have to do is my page name is, uh, my mantra is life without, comp with life with no compromise. So we're going to live that life as a woman with no compromise to ourselves. Yes, we're going to have duties. I'm not telling you, you know, run away from your duties. No. Yeah. I am more into is how to be yourself in any situation. It doesn't matter. We're going to be in struggle. It's not that you're going to leave your house and maybe you cannot leave it, but you can have that peace in you, in your heart, in your mind that whatever you just be ready for it. Yeah. Be ready for any situation. Believe in yourself, connect with, you know, uh, you know, divine source or whatever community, connect with women and uh, don't even, uh, whenever you have, you know, is the thought of, uh, <clears throat> I'm not good enough. You are good enough. Just confidence, you know, have self-confidence, yeah. talk to your inner self. Yeah. So that mm -hmm. will be, uh, you know, anyone who wants to reach me, yes, they can reach me through Facebook. Okay, perfect. Yes. Well, I'll leave your link in the description so people can contact you and reach out to you if they just like to have more support on this topic of or course. have questions about, about anything that we've talked about today. Uh, I want to thank you so much for sharing this story. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that we, uh, well, that you helped someone uh, out yes. there. Um, yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I'm very honored and blessed and uh, sharing this message. And the only hope is, yes, you know, connect with me. And if my story can inspire you, even a one person, my purpose is served. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> yes. Well, thank okay. you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>